Chapter 16 Thanks for meeting me at such short notice, Andy McManus said. Not a problem at all. There Andy was sat in the office of a financial advisor, who was also a friend, Barry Branson. Barry had looked after Andy and Mark's father's finances, and their father had introduced the two boys to Barry before he passed away. Now Barry looked after their financial affairs. Plus, he and Andy had struck up a friendship over the years. I needed someone to talk to. I know that I'll get the straight answers from you. Everyone is so sorry, so sympathetic, but that's not what I need right now. I need a bit of truth. Do you think that Mark had a life that I didn't know about? Do you think that he was doing things that he hid from me, hid from the rest of the world, that might have got him killed? A lot of questions there, Barry replied. He was like an uncle in the way that they get on famously, but there was a noticeable age gap. Barry stroked the long beard on his chin while he thought. He had worn a beard as long as Andy had known him. Somehow, it looked bang up to date and from the 1970s at the same time. His clothes were the same. A suit that could have been older than Andy, but looked in good nick. Shoes that his dad would have called winkle pickers and bifocal glasses with a green tint. And I think we can work these out one by one. He did have some business interests that you don't know about. With no kids, I'm sure you already know this, you can accumulate wealth at a pretty fast rate. Mark was worth many hundreds of thousands of pounds. And with that much money, he was always looking at alternative ways to make it work harder for him. With bank interest rates well below half a percent, I don't blame him. One day, he asked if I knew anyone who was setting up a business venture that needed financial backing. Normally, I just tell people that's not my thing, but it just so happened that earlier that day I met someone who was doing just that. He wanted to set up a golf course, buying the empty land near the new Amazon warehouse on the edge of town. I connected the pair of them and even got involved in a small scale myself. I had no idea. Was this a legitimate deal? The deal? Yes. The businessman? I'm not so sure. He talked the talk, but I'm not sure he had the wherewithal to follow it all through. Mark was up to his eyeballs in the golf course. He read somewhere that Elon Musk is getting into golf courses. He thought that buying a golf course was a cash cow that would give milk forever. I tried to get him to diversify his investments, think about things. But he and Daniel Godfrey had already set up a limited company. Mark had deposited pretty much all of his cash in the company's bank account. And what would happen to all that money in the event of Mark's death? Andy asked a face filled with worry. They had always promised each other that the first person they would look after in the event of their death was each other. I'm not sure, but his will has all the details. In fact, I set up his will. I can get you a copy if you'd like. I don't suppose I'm breaking any confidentiality if the guy's already dead, am I? Sorry, your brother's awful demise has upset me to the point where I'm not making the right decisions. At least, that's my defence, if I'm ever asked. I'm game if you are, Andy responded. Barry was already tapping away at his computer to retrieve the file. Well, well, well. I'm sure you won't be surprised to find that, in the event of Mark's death, all the money goes to the limited company. So, in effect, that means all of the money goes directly to Daniel Godfrey. Little fucker! Andy bellowed. Barry wasn't sure whether he was talking about his brother or Daniel Godfrey. He thought about inquiring, then decided he didn't want to know. Maybe it was both of them. Yes, uh, the entirety of his estate, excluding his home, that goes to you. Andy tapped his foot on the ground as though he needed to expend as much energy in a shorter space of time as possible. He looked up at the ceiling and let the tears run down his face. They collected at the bottom of his chin before dropping onto the floor. A penny for your thoughts, Barry Branson asked. 
Where on earth can I find Daniel Godfrey? Andy asked. Funny you ask. I've just had a message from him to say that he's in the police station in the town centre. Drink driving. And they're throwing a few other things at him too. 